food is weird, man. I yeah. feel like it's yeah, because it's like what was it? Okay, like before COVID, it was Food Network. Yeah, that was the big. Yeah, that was, that was the, big, the thing. big thing. Yeah, because I can't think of like. A single like content creator, like there's only one, and that's the uh, extreme culinary outfitters. They could right. have easily been the like hundred k fucking channel about line cook shit. Yes, but not, but but it's it's now it's like uh, your Josh Wiseman. He kind of, but he's mostly cooking. Yeah. Like when he, when he makes yeah. food, I feel like he earlier videos it it's explained more in a way like I feel like I'm talking to a chef explaining me a dish. That's yeah. about to go out. Now it's like he's he knows how to speak in a more general because now he has a general population. I mean, he has his book out on Target for Christ's sake, you know? Yeah. I mean, his shit, like, I mean, <clears throat> you know, the way I've always expressed it, like the Josh Wiseman thing, like, he obviously can cook and that's not the problem. It's like he's kind of doing what Babish did. Like, okay, he got a fan base by doing legit cooking stuff and explaining things and kind of breaking things down and blah 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 but then they just started like Babish started making shit from like uh, TV shows and blah 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 and Wiseman's taking like fast food and, like I can do a McRib better like yeah I I mean you fucking better like I hope so I don't yeah I but mean like, yeah I you better care, like I don't know man Who? I know people so, would watch that it's just kind yeah. of like an uninteresting it's not that hard just to like reinvent something or make it even better you could do that with any genre you know yeah no i mean that's that's i, w- I wouldn't call it lowest common denominator food but it's it's like it's definitely safe yeah it's like okay so what and, and for professionals i'm I, I can see across the board probably people are like yeah no this is kind of whatever who cares but the average person that wants food network and like alternative food uh media like that's not food network you know loves that shit probably and what do you like to watch as far as food media like what is your favorite uh you know i i try to watch things that are uh explaining more cultural uh cultural dishes like asian things indian food and a bunch of other stuff that try to because lately like there's been a big push for you know non-white people to try and do food and like eater does usually does pretty good videos even though i don't like their articles their articles tend to be kind of stupid and and overdone and kind of whatever but their their videos and like you know they go out and find people doing cool things in chinatowns and and things like that and I, i like this kind of things or like people you know trying to small joints that you know are getting a spotlight for this and that or whatever uh, and I also like to watch fundamentals. Like uh, my my big thing in kitchens has always been like pantry essentials. You know, you're making like mustards and you're making like vinegars and and things to boost flavor across the board, regardless of what you're doing. You can just kind of like pick and choose what you want in the moment. So I always like even for cookbooks, my my favorite section in most of those cookbooks are like the pantry essentials section that are like you know, jams and compotes and whatever, whatever. Because I, I find that stuff more interesting than just like, oh, this is how you like grill grill beef or whatever. You're like, there's, there's a lot of useless stuff, you know, in, in a lot of books. And a lot of media, like, is... This is the one thing, like, for this podcast and for other things that I want to avoid too, right? Because uh, there's a lot of people, you know, doing youtube videos and like yeah this is how you cut like small dice like okay i mean a small dice is a small dice and and you know there's not reinventing the wheel and everyone's kind of making the same fucking videos and it's a bit incestuous and you know it gets kind of boring after a while and nobody else needs to make that shit i think but people do so yeah that's kind of my thing no for sure i think that's uh Mm. that was like a I guess I can. Yeah, it's kind of like <clears throat> I feel like a lot of people get stale really quickly, yes. and you can usually tell by like what the topic is because mm. it's usually like what the fuck. Like today we're gonna talk about uh, we our special guest is the fucking Greenleaf driver. Yeah, like so you see a lot of restaurants. It's like, dude, like you're really reaching. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, I hope we don't get to that point, but yeah, I agree. There's, 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 there's a fundamental like, Ooh, okay. Now you've, you've, you've kind of bumped into the everything. You're really you're stretching like, it. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're kind of, yeah. Like what there was an episode with, uh, it was on raise. He interviewed like a food producer. It was cool. I'm not against it, yeah. but I would, it's that, that was almost like, I could see it. It's like you're balancing, like you're, you're having a hard time finding like, original creative content there is one one podcast of course it's a small podcast too let me see if i if i have it on my list my library shows there's one called i think my secret serve no it's not that it's like so it's it's just like literally a guy he has line cooks on and he just has them whatever the fuck ever cool most of the time they're just sharing fucking stories my secret service podcast okay uh, that, that's what it is, and it's just like a line cook with like some other line cooks, and they just essentially they're just having a beer and just sharing stories. That one was cool. Yeah, it was a little too random for my tastes. Yeah, but, yeah. I think the only like food media that really like I would binge watch was Extreme Culinary Outfitters, and mm. it's only because he was talking about shit that was relevant to me, is relevant to me. Like yeah. you know, just getting through the. So, like you said, the social aspect of the kitchen, the work is, that's the easy part. It's like mm. the same problems that are going to follow you throughout every kitchen you're ever going to be in, you know? Yeah. In many ways, once you're in one kitchen, you're in all the kitchens. Yeah, in a way. I mean, you you become, I, I wouldn't say conditioned, because there's certain aspects of, you know, being in a kitchen that you're like, okay, because uh, you know the, there's the sexism issue, and and then there's other there's other things that have you know come up recently in the industry that you know it's good that these things come to light, but you know you don't want to uh, cultivate toxic environments uh, anymore. You know, I, I you know I, I I've worked in some shittier places than others when it comes to toxic environments, and I've you know worked in really good chill places. So I mean. It's a bit of a mixed bag, and I think for the most part, the better places are starting to win out because mm-hmm. the toxic guys are kind of getting weeded out, and they're kind of that Me Too thing is kind of, you know, weeding them all out actually, essentially. So I, I, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, the the cultural thing can be a little difficult because you know we're expected to work long hours, and we're expected to kind of put in everything we can, and and all these things, and you know the a lot of people now, a lot of the older people are saying, oh, the people in their work ethic and like, no, they just want a nice balance. They're, if you give them what they want, they'll work for you hard when they're with you. Just, just you know, it's not so hard. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a difficult thing for people to wrap their head around that are, you know, under 45 or above 45. <laughs> yeah. So, it- but, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Mm. Actually, you know what? Three of the older guys that I work with, I would yeah. say, don't subscribe. They're they're pretty pretty up to date with just the way things are. They're pretty yeah. good guys. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, my chef for sure is is going to be a real pain to work with. Sure, like he just started. It's already been a week, and it's like already. I can already tell. I'm not going to enjoy this. Uh, but it's all right. Yeah. I, I can see. I can see it coming. It hit the, every problem is going to revolve around somehow him, him and his morning crew not having time. Uh, but we yeah. are held to a higher standard, right? Yeah, I've 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 worked in situations like that where. You know, the it's the AM versus the PM, and you know, one gets valued over the other. Usually, it's the PM that gets valued over the other uh, over the AM because the PM usually makes the money. So it's kind of like, oh, the AM comes in and like mops up everybody's shit and 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 whatever. Like sometimes the night crew doesn't close properly, and the AM has to almost clean before they even start. And that staff. is a hundred percent what it's like, but it's the opposite. That's because- weird. Okay. We're in, so like it's a, I don't know what the factors are, but yeah, we got we're, we're a deli, we're inside of a hotel, okay, a, a historic hotel, 
Yeah. But we're separate. We're not a part of it. So like they can't order room service from us. Oh, they God. they yeah. would have they would have to like order directly from us to pick up. Okay. Um so I'm guessing that's where everyone goes in the morning. There's like three other coffee shops and the train station. So I'm guessing that's where people go for their breakfast or bagel. It's a little more upper scale, but it's also quick. Because we have breakfast places. There's a place called, uh, uh, I think it's called Crepe Escape. I don't okay. know, but it's really good fucking breakfast shit. I fucking love there. Cool. But um, yeah, ours is more Jewish, deli, high-end style. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Typically from like... 8, 9 p.m. all the way to like 2 p.m. It's just crazy. Like they did 400 today in the morning. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like those are real numbers. And we're over here like maybe like 200 at night. Okay. So the, the, a, the AM is the one making the money. The AM keeps the lights on. Okay. Well, being a deli, lunch makes sense that you get that's the busy time. Exactly. So, okay. But it's wow. ju- it's just really obnoxious because it's like the kitchen I was before. This is the same company. The kitchen I was in before, um, yeah. the chef would require you. You had to both work the service, which would go from 350 all the way to like 450 in the morning. Yeah. Plus, you had to do your prep. Plus, you had to stock like your saute pans back. And okay. you had to clean up, flip, restock the station, and check out with the PM cook coming in that day. Oh wow! And like you, like you couldn't miss any of that. Like that was part of your job. Okay. So like you had to like really like be really good with like your time management and your space and all that kind of shit. Right. So for him to just come and tell me like, oh, I should come and work a morning so I can see what it's like is a little insulting. Like, no, I know what it's like. You just uh, you're just not asking that of your cooks. See, I haven't seen that since like uh, my first very first job in cooking was like in a chain kind of situation. So they opened at eleven or something for lunch or ten thirty or whatever it was, and, and then the night crew basically came in at like five ish, four thirty or five, and so you would do lunch. But then you'd have to restock everything for the PM, make sure everything was like ready for them, everything was stocked, ready to go, even though lunch was crazy in itself. But that that was the place that the nighttime, like they came in just like rock stars and just started doing stuff. But you had to supply them with everything, fill them up, make sure they had backups, all this shit, blah, blah, blah. And sometimes yeah, you didn't like, have time, but you know, that's the way it went. Yeah, it was usually if like time was truly, truly. Like oh it just didn't. Yeah. Then the only thing you would you you could get out of would be like prepping an item. Be like right. okay that's fine. Uh, we'll just have the sous chef or uh, one of the prep cooks. We'll just put it on their list. Right right. But right. the cleaning and restocking was like that's a big no no. Like he, he'll fucking write you up for that shit. He doesn't he doesn't want to hear it. Okay. You know. Like okay. So for me that's kind of just like where my head's at. It's weird for me to go into a kitchen where like cleanliness isn't held up at that level or time yeah. management. Yeah. So again, again, I guess I, I guess it's just one of those things. Like I'm just having to get used to his uh, his chefing style, and I can't. Yeah. You know, it's like I mean, if he's new too, right? He's probably trying to make not necessarily a name for himself, but he's trying to you know assert himself in in the way that he feels he needs to. I guess. Yeah, yeah, he's more. He definitely gets like, I don't want to say walked on, but like, so he, him, and the previous chef, which is now who is now the GM of the restaurant. Okay. Um, they really like hiring Latin women, just because okay. they bust their ass. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, you put too many alpha personalities in the kitchen, and then everyone wants to be the alpha, and then you have chefs that kind of yeah. like both. Oh, who are in their mid to late fifties who right. don't have that energy, don't want to do as much. They give them more power. They, you know, and then it just becomes almost like kind of like there's that asshole in the kitchen that everyone tolerates, yeah. but he's just so fucking good. <laughs> they're always like kicking ass too, right? They're always they're, like, they're just yeah, yeah. I, I, I can take five more tickets. Sure. Go ahead. And you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> 
you but fucking he's like prick. The, yeah, and he's the worst human being there. Yeah, yeah. So then yeah. what happens in this kitchen is just a bunch of women just kind of like, you know, getting flirty with a mid-50-year-old guy, and they Eww. do what the fuck they want. And now it's time to go, and it's like, that's it. And it's like, fuck, uh, dude. Yeah, okay. That's Yeah, that can be a hard place to be. Yeah, I can see that. Especially if it's like clicky. There's like little clicks at form and everyone's oh my God. like, you know. It is there's clicks and then there's sub clicks. All oh. the women will depending on who's there, that's yeah. the click. And then okay. even with it it's like oh my God. It'd be like you, D C and me, right? Yeah. Like imagine we're the three clicks. Right. We're the three guys. But then when it's just D C and me, we talk shit about you. Then when it's just you oh, and me, we talk shit about yeah. D C when it's it. yeah, yeah. so it's so it's so like I trust no one in that kitchen. Because everyone just talks shit about everyone. And then when you think like, okay, well, they get along. I think there's like a little alliance there. Oh, <laughs> never never mind. Nope, nope, nope. They're, they're talking shit about each other. It's, it's really like a bunch of 18-year-old. Imagine like 18-year-old cooks yeah. trying to like be top dog. So sure. they have friends, but it's like at a moment's notice, it's fucking gladiator time. I, I imagine like we we're talking about food media a little bit ago, but like the, you're basically on a TV show now. And it's like a little cutthroat thing going on. It is. It yeah. is. And so I kind of have to figure out, it's like, okay, how do I get these women to move in one go, mm. how to unify them and not get caught up in this shit? I'm just not. I'm not, I'm not putting up with that shit. Are you not in their, their Latinx community, though? Or is it uh, like not? <laughs> you, you, you can't, you know, <laughs> I'm t- I'm, reason I, with I'm them t- in that way? Nah, I'm too whitewashed for that shit. <laughs> I'm too white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm too. Uh, I got too much privilege to be there, type of Latino. You're, you're, a, you're a white Latino. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. I mean, oh, uh, that can yeah, be difficult. Yeah. <laughs> but they know you speak Spanish, right? Like they, they yeah, don't it, try and my, shit it's, talk it's, you in Spanish. It's the first job where ninety, eighty percent of my day is yeah. speaking Spanish. Oh, okay. So the, used the, to be, the language in the kitchen is Spanish for you. The language in the kitchen is Spanish 100%, except when I'm talking to the chef, yeah. um, like one or two cooks, and front of house. Okay. Other than that, I am speaking Spanish all day. Okay. You know, okay. and um, I mean, with the women, it was kind of a little difficult. First of all, I had to have like this breaking moment with each one of them because they right. would challenge my authority and I just didn't give it. I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. Right. So, so I've already had a little blow up with all of them. Okay. Um, and then the second one was, and then the second thing I had to like figure out is just, just the lead by example. So it's like I really never have told them to do anything. I kind of just started doing everything that I was supposed to be delegating out. I would just make that like that's what I'm doing all day. Yeah. Just to show them that I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm about it. I'm not going to ask you to do something that I wouldn't do myself. Right. And yeah. now I'm at a point where it's like they just ask me, like, hey, is there something I can do to take off your plate? Is there anything? Like, they want to do shit for me. I'm like, okay, cool. I let them have it to an extent. You know, <laughs> you know but, what? You know, there is something you can do. Yes. You know what? There yes. is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a couple things I got on my list that you can fucking tackle. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. we do a lot of cleaning. We do a lot of organizing. Sure. Um the the continuous joke I have with the cooks with anything is um, when something's not done or something is done wrong or anytime I need to shit talk one of them, I'll just be like, oh, you probably just didn't have time. Because they, they know. They see that I fucking make time for shit. That's your code for like, yeah. you fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the code. Like, yeah. uh, like, like what's going to be your bullshit excuse? Oh, it's okay. Maria just didn't have time. Yeah, she just couldn't find the moments in the day. She to couldn't do find the, the basics of her job. It's okay, exactly, exactly, exactly. I got her exactly. covered. <laughs> <laughs> I got her. I, I got her. No, no problem. No problem. Like, I, 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 I found have, time. I found time. I, I found. I found the moments when in some, my when life goes to, to do the this. Bathroom, I'm always like, "Can you make sure you have time to wash your hands?" <laughs> Please, please use paper towel and uh, please uh, wash, wash and dry. It's very so good. So now they, yeah, so now we're all on the same page. And that's kind of, you know, like I'm, they're only with this chef for like an hour a day. But now, yeah, they're all kind of like beginning yeah. to see the problem. Ah, uh, okay. Today, today, um, our only like 
um, white cook. So he is like three months sober, I think. He just graduated last oh, week from his nice. sober program. Nice. He lives in the homeless shelter a block down the street. And so he could he can be there up to two years. So now that he's graduated, like he can move out and everything. But because he's like legit homeless, homeless, yeah. um, he set up like he can be there up to two years. Only has to pay five hundred dollars in rent, and that includes food and everything um, until cool. he get he finds his own place. And with the rent that he's paying to five hundred, yeah. half of that gets returned back to him when he moves out. So it's cool. like he's also saving money, you know? So Perfect. he's set up really well. He's going to a little culinary program at our junior college. Nice. And, I mean, everything's looking up. But, yeah, like today he was just um, – he's like, he came up to me. He's like, oh, sorry. So this is the list I made last, last night, the prep list. And it was still here when I got here. And he asked me, like, what time the cooks get here. And I'm like, they get here at 6, <laughs> 6 in the morning. And they start yeah. – service at eight and then they work till like two and so um yeah and so he was telling me basically all the problems that i already know it was like it came in and nothing that list is still there the list wasn't done my station wasn't stocked my station was dirty um everything's yeah. just a mess and i'm yeah. like yeah you know, it's like what about, huh? it's like yeah like i don't know what hey you know what uh, and so I did the I did the most manager thing I could. And I'm like, I'm sorry, their AM just doesn't have time because they're doing service. And he gives me this look, like <laughs> he like you can tell he was giving me time to say something before he made a judgment about the kind of person that I am. Like he gave me ten seconds. I'm like, yeah. I'm just kidding. That's not my word. That's what the chef says. Okay, I don't yeah. believe it. He's like, yeah, no, I don't believe that either. Like, no, what are you talking about? There's no time. Yeah, I mean, there's there's like a clean as you go kind of thing. There's a like work cleaner, smarter. Like, you know, if you pick up a deli, you put it back where it fucking goes. You know, these sort of it's things a are super economy important. Economy of movement. Yes, yes. Like I have, I'm having that problem at this place that I'm at right now. It's like everyone's just. There's just shit everywhere all the time, and it's it's gotten to a point where I can't fix because I'm just a line cook there. I'm just a chef de partie. I I I physically don't. Uh, I cannot fix all of the issues that way, and not that I've stopped trying, but like I'm just gonna do what I can. Like there's a lot of non-labeling going on. There's a lot of shit everywhere. Non-rotation. Uh, they just kind of sprawl out everywhere. I'm like, fuck, please. Like, <laughs> this is driving me a bit crazy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I can't, I can't fix it. So I gotta, I gotta learn to kind of let go a little bit and say, okay, uh, you know, I'm not That's in a position it. to fix this. And realistically, I just have to, yeah, take a chill. It's, dude, it is so weird that you're saying yeah. this because, like, the whole, I would say the last week, that's been almost like like the theme. Like everyone yeah. that's come and talked to me in the kitchen has talked to me about that. Or like the comments that I've been answering or DMs have to do with almost like the same whole like, yeah, like making time for things, working well, uh, you know. But more importantly, just like knowing what you have power over and what you don't have power over. Yeah. You know, like, Super like, important. like, like, like you care, but there's a certain point where you it, it it's just you're you're not it's not going to benefit you because you're not going to get the return that you want you know yeah. like i can't expect a clean kitchen when i come in because it's just going to piss me off every time yes it's just easier for me to understand that when i come in i check in with everyone and immediately i get to cleaning the to like the sweep the mop i take out the trash the recycling and I, that's yes. that's what i've been doing it's just part of my routine yes. Yes. And that's a lot easier to digest than like, well, I'm going to go clean up their fucking mess. Yeah, you, you can't because then it's me versus them situation. You get in that kind of mode where you're you're just kind of uh, I don't know, man. Like, y yeah, you get this mentality and you're always just going pissed off and it's never going to help anybody. But, you know, you, you go in and you're like, okay, well, I'll just do what I can. And realistically, that's all you can do. Especially, I mean, even even to a certain extent, like a sous chef or a head chef, like you know, in Norway, it's really hard to fire people unless they really fuck up or they steal or some shit. You know, it's really hard to fire people. And you know, at the end of the day, 
you got who you have, and then you know whether they do their job or not is it's not like oh well my hands are tied at all points, but you know at a certain point like people are going to do what they're going to do. So th- this exact thing came up with DC in our last um, a cook will sway episode. Yeah, I don't know how it came up, but I just. I think I came I came up with what I think is a pretty good ratio for okay. that. And it's the it I say 45 65. And yeah. so what it means is at most you should you should first you need to figure out what is like your chef's like wh- what are they at at 100%. Like my chef at 100% is good at knocking out a prep list and getting service through, but not say cleaning, not being right. a leader, not um, reprimanding people, you right. know, but that's his 100%. I think it's healthy to give him 65% of the total of his 100% at yeah. most. Anything yeah, more, yeah, I remember, I remember hearing this in the podcast. Yeah, I, anything I agree, more I agree than it's, yeah, because then, because then you're giving too much, and then it's almost like a one way relationship, and you're giving more than what you're getting back. But if you don't, if you're just in a bum ass kitchen or just a quick little kitchen, I think forty five percent is the minimum. Anything lower than that, then it's like you you start yeah. to compromise your own ideals. Yeah, when I heard DC's uh, talk about like the the way he, they were he was treated and the way everything was going down at that place he was at, I was like, whoa, shit, that's <laughs> that's rough. You don't want you don't want to be in those bum kitchens, you know. You don't want to be in those fucking places unless you know. Some guys just had it rough, and they just became fry cooks at bars, and that's just all they've done, and whatever. Some people like that, you know. Because you know, if, if they like it, it, they like it. That's fine. It's a great, it's a good easy check. Yes. It's just I'm just someone that can't see a problem and just see it not get handled. It begins to eat me away. Sure. Yeah. And that's I'm, the same as me. I'm trying to learn to let go. I internalize quite a bit. And I take on stuff on myself. Even when I've been sous chefs at places, I I have done shit myself just out of the fact that, like, fuck it. I'm going to get this done now as opposed to hoping they get to it sometime because I can do it now and get it done. And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, you just you just have to be realistic. It's kind of like when you own a place or you're managing a place, you couldn't possibly – like expect the fucking young cook of two years or whatever to give a shit as much or even an old dog or whatever to really give a shit as much as you do because the restaurant represents you or if you're ownership, you know, nobody's going to take care of your, your business and your baby as much as you would. And that's kind of ridiculous to expect really. And I, yeah. I, have, to, I have to keep reminding myself that, you know, someone just, someone left me a comment they were they just got promoted to a lead line cook but the owner they're running through cooks they're burning through cooks like crazy like they can't get anyone to stick around yeah. because they keep changing the menu the owner has no hospitality experience they just how think fun. yeah how cool it is <laughs> yeah and so they're just they're doing everything you know and they're trying to care and all this shit and i just told them it's like dude you got to get out of there because yeah. like you can either be the band playing as the boat is sinking, or get on you get on a fucking lifeboat. Get on a fucking lifeboat. Yeah, I mean it depends on how like how set in your ways you are too. If you're if you're relatively young and you still have a lot of growing to do, yeah, get out. I mean if you're older and you can still keep your morals and your ethics and you, you know your your you can keep doing what you're going to do. Like like I said, this place, for instance, I'm like one of the only people that actually labels anything and it drives me nuts. Jesus you know? Christ. I yeah. yeah, see, yeah. that would drive me. Yeah, and I, and I just have to be realistic. Like, sometimes I go in the fridge, and but I also don't like mislabeling stuff. Like, oh, you know, when uh, health inspectors come in, like, there's always that one guy that knows. It gets a nod from the sous chef, and like you know what to do, and you go in there with the tape and pen, and you're like, "Fuck it, it's from yesterday. This is from two days ago." Ah, mm-hmm. you know, you're making up fucking numbers left and right. You're like, "Okay," and of course, like I'm, I can't. Yeah, I can't be the only one that has seen that or done it. Like, yeah, of course that happens, but you know, people just got to be realistic with their expectations and 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 be okay with a little bit of shortcomings. 
because it's just gonna happen. Like, yeah, you were talking about like the new cooks, and I think like it's the first two years. Yeah, that's for me. It's so important that a cook the first two years has like a good person above them to help them yeah. out because I think that's where you're gonna get like the real good like hard like habits, the good habits. You know, yeah, work clean as you go. Yeah, a lot of places it's like you just you have to figure that out on your own. You know, it's nice when it yeah. it's nice when it's someone's walking you through that because then you're like, oh, okay. I understand the concept and thanks for showing me because I wouldn't have figured out how. Yeah. I mean, having mentors is pretty important. I mean, the, 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 the chefing world and food media and stuff will make you think like, Oh, you got to go to this two star with three Michelin star or whatever, all these things and find like a named chef or, and, and have them like guide you through life. Like, it doesn't happen that way for the vast majority of people. I mean, you'll find small mentors and things of like, because literally everyone can learn something from everybody else. Literally everyone, even me, yeah. you know, I've got 14 years and even people like I'm working with a, a Syrian guy now. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of Middle Eastern shit that I have no idea, no concept of like cooking and what that is. I'm sure there's tons of shit he could like impress upon me. But he's only been cooking, I don't know, f five, six years maybe professionally. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, uh, age, age is nothing but a number in a way, you know. And uh, everyone can learn everything from anybody. But it's it's who you put your stock into and, and what they put out for you is kind of the important bit. It, exactly. Like <clears throat> someone I hang out, I like to like hang out and let talk to me anytime yeah. is, the, uh, is the dishwasher. Mm. He's like he's like eighty, but he tells me about how he used to be a cook at a in New York. Yeah, and tells me good stories, and he just showed like little things like, oh, here's a quicker way how to like take out the chunky stuff from the stock and clean it. Right. I'm like, damn. Like he just it would take me two hours before, and now it just takes me forty five minutes because of this guy. Like, damn, that's how smart. I mean, little the old thing, dishwasher is the greatest. <laughs> It, uh, oh my god, my yeah, my best dishwashers have been the fucking 80 slow fucking cook, but I don't know how they fucking move fast because they walk slow as fuck. It's efficiency of movement. That's it, it, you know they have it down. They don't it's, gotta run. Yeah. And they and it. they get more done than anyone. Yes. And they're still like peeling your potatoes or your fucking carrots. And they're, they're like, prepping fuck. for you. Yeah, yeah. God damn it. Tell me you, you motherfuckers don't have time to clean. What is your fucking secret? You old... I remember I was working at this French bistro back home uh, for a while, and there, there's this guy, old old man, he's probably 75 or something, named Rashid from Sri Lanka. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's Muslim, and he's very old and traditional, but very friendly, very nice guy. Uh, and I remember, I think I was 26 or something, 25, 26 at the time. And uh, he's like, oh, are, are you married? I was like, no, Rashi, no, I'm not married. He's like, oh, do you, ha do you have a girlfriend? I was like, no, I'm single, man. He's like, are you gay? Rashi, no, man, I'm not <laughs> gay. I'm just single. <laughs> Damn. For, for, like, for like a week, two weeks, I was like, every time I saw him, I was like, Rashi, I'm not gay, man. Like, <laughs> he's like, I mean, oh, no, 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 it's fine. Like, it's fine to be gay, Rashi. I'm just making fun. But like, yeah, I'm just single, man. Don't worry. <laughs> no, he's like, no, it's okay. You don't, you don't have to hide that you're gay. You're single. Yeah, yeah. You're not yeah. married. <laughs> I know you're just, gay. You, it's okay. It's okay. You just like a little pee pee. It's fine. It's cool. <laughs> man, Rashid is out of pocket, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, wow, Rashid. Okay, that's ballsy. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm straight. I'm just, you know, single. That's all. Oh, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember this. DC and I for tomorrow, we're gonna record. Um, relationships oh wow yeah, yeah so it's gonna be like against relationships flings versus for that kind of shit sure i'm definitely i'm, I'm gonna do that what are you see, doing for for or against well i i said for i i did i'm gonna do for yeah, dc okay. asked me i'm like well i'm the only one that's in a stable healthy relationship so i think i'm best qualified to talk about that yeah yeah or you should do it against, I guess, and see, like, that you, if your wife listens and you're like, oh, awkward. <laughs> I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, okay. I, be, I, I started cooking when I, w I was already married. 
when I started cooking. Right, right, right. So yeah. it's like I got I got very little to put to talk about. You know, I can only just what I've seen. You know, this is yeah. what I've seen. And if I were single, this is what I would do. We're kind of changing it because, like, we find ourselves being more. Um, in, in our first episode when we went in, we thought it'd be more like it, like like a hard debate. Yeah. But then we noticed that it's like it's it's not going like that. We're having conversations. We're agreeing on certain points. We're disagreeing on some points. So it's more like it's it, it's it's turning into more like a loose. Like I'm just gonna loosely take this side. But you know yeah. what? I might I might have something to say for the other side. Yeah, and that's for, fine too. For the two that I've listened to now, like obviously, you know, it's the first one is you guys tried to <laughs> stay on topic, but the second one, yeah, it, I mean, I think you're just taking more like hard topics, like very very specific, like smoking or non, yes or no, bah. But then of course you can kind of debate it and go like here there whatever yeah know. it's not i'm not super like fuck that shit <laughs> but just for the sake of argument yeah i'll I'll play devil's advocate and be against it sure you can do sure. both why not you can, yeah fuck yeah. it why not L- live your truth you know yolo <laughs> you know what's the one technical thing like um side thing when i think of like nfts and all this technology there's one technology that i think would be awesome for yeah the industry and that's 3d printing for some reason sure the tiktok algorithm has just been bombarding me with 3d printing okay (laughs) and just like weird it's so crazy how cheap it is to make and how cheap the equipment is and then the profit margin but what are you what are they 3d printing well like this one i'm watching this woman she did like a do you remember those like snakes when we were a kid that were made out of wood that yeah. were interlocked so they were flexible and stuff? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like this one that I'm looking at, it's it's a weird like flexible plastic, almost like uh, latex. Okay. And it's like it's like a snake like that, like it's a wobbly snake, but like she's pulling on it and throwing it and hitting it against things and it's pretty fucking durable. And again, right. it just printed in like 25 hours. Huh. But it costs seventy five cents to make. Oh, cool! So like, then so it's you just like, make kids' toys and just make a fortune. So then I'm thinking, really... like, okay, cool. So I can make like, uh, I can make maybe like quart cups that look cool. You know, think about that, like a quart cup that yeah. looks like a coffee tumbler, or the first. Actually, that that one I just came up with originally today. I was thinking like, oh, so like you could three D print like a um, like a knife sheath. Yeah, I mean, you could do whatever you like. I mean, I'm, I don't know if you can make menus that way, but I don't know. 3D print a menu? Yeah, maybe. I mean, if if you don't plan on changing the menu items, you could do that. Yeah. If you put Ooh. it on like a tablet of sorts, do I guess. It like a, so. See, do it like a tablet, yeah. and then and then you you just pr- you uh, put ink on it, and then you could just print out, like stamp out the menu. That could be mm. kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, I think 3D printing is more valuable than an NFT. The NFT thing, I mean, is uh, like it's just I, I've been doing I'm, so much research on it; it's kind of spinning my head, and not in a good way. I'm I'm trying to find out, like, because I don't care about all this, you know, uh, board monkey shit and people stealing, you know, pictures from somebody's computer that are worth like 1.7 million dollars or, or whatever. There's a bunch of evidence of people like cheating others and all this fucking around but i'm trying to find out like how how does it affect us because you know like i sent you that article a couple weeks ago like gary v is opening this a restaurant in new york or whatever that's nft based which to me i don't really know what that means because they were saying you know you, you get an nft token and it's basically membership to uh i would i what i equated to a country club kind of situation it is, yeah. It's basically that. There's tiers of it. Yeah. Depending on what you got. You buy and sell and trade your membership, which is okay, I guess. But then how is that any different than anything else? Like, you're basically creating a new technology or utilizing a new technology for something that kind of already exists. And I don't really... I've, I've, I've looked around for people to try and explain to me, like, what can you do that you can't do now with NFTs for the restaurant industry. And how does that kind of move us forward? Like, I I don't really know. 
I find it. Uh, You're just adding another step to selling tickets. Kind of, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, that's all you're fucking doing. You're just you're putting a ticket. You're basically just like taking like a QR code, and you're putting a JPEG over it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's you're putting it. a picture of your logo on it or whatever the fuck, and you're like, okay, okay, that's it. But, so you're but just it's not like, different. Sco- <sighs> yeah. So like, how is that different than like? Yeah. Okay. So then, what I'll do is. I'll make physical little boxes. Like, have you seen those like super cool, like when people do like wedding invites, they open the box and it's like these paper butterflies come out Yeah, yeah. and there's a little, okay. So just do something like that for your next pop-up. Cause let me tell you something. I think that would be a million times fucking cooler than a fucking little JPEG you see on the phone. Can you imagine just filming a little opening? You're invited to my fucking like 13 table dinner. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's think yeah. it can be printed out in a little scroll or like a little uh, Charlie, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. We're gonna yeah. sell 100 chocolates, and five of them have gold tickets inside of them. And you get to be, and then <sighs> you go there, and Dominic Crenn will make a dish, and then you know, who the fuck ever, you know. Yeah, I mean, when I did a pop up back in Canada before I left for Scandinavia, I, I got a, I found a girl, a local girl doing calligraphy and stuff online. And I got her to write up uh, 15 menus or whatever it was uh, by hand and stuff. And, you know, I just paid her out of the profits of the thing. And, you know, that, that worked pretty well. But uh, I don't know. The it NFT almost, thing is kind of, I don't know. It kind of feels like we're getting in a, t- in a point technologically where like we're just bored. I it's mean like, that's the, that's social media in, in a nutshell, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's like that's how you develop like first world problems. You have yeah. so much of everything that now you can start like tinkering with like media. It's like if it's not fixed broken, but now we're tweakers and we're just tweaking every little thing. Like, how can we make it better? How can I reinvent the can? Yeah, well, I mean, how Gary V re- is basically just taking a fucking the 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 country club model and then just. The only thing that's really truly different is people can pass off memberships to others and sell it. I mean, the one thing I did hear, but that's it doesn't it benefits the restaurant, I guess. But like, if you make an NFT, you can basically make a, a, a resell value on top of it. So the original creator of the NFT gets a pre proceed from every transaction that goes beyond the first one, even. So I guess that goes straight to the restaurant, but it's, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm a bit naive and I just, I prefer like a neighborhood restaurant that just, you know, does well, but not like stretches too far. I don't understand why you have to maximize all profits all the time and, you know, and all these things. So I don't know. I don't get why that's important or why. Look at this. I'm reading this. Check this out. Flyfish yeah. has two types of tokens available. Two, it's a two-tier membership. Okay. A Flyfish token and a Flyfish Omakasi token. The Flyfish token initially offered at 2.5 Ethereum, which roughly estimates to $8,400. Gets me. you into the restaurant and cocktail lounge, while the Omakasi token offered at 4.25 Ethereum, which is about $14,300, gets okay. you all that plus entry into the exclusive Omakasi room. <laughs> Ooh, an Omakasi room. Right. You don't say. <laughs> yeah. So that's not even the, a free meal, at least? You don't get at least a free meal with your purchase of your NFT or whatever? No, no, you just, you just got into the place. That's, That's just to walk in. So it's basically just rich people showing off that they are rich. Yes. But by owning a, a, a GIF, GIF or whatever. Oh, oh, the tokens are leasable. Oh, yeah. So you buy one for 4,000 and then you can just lease it to like someone for a thousand dollars a month. Okay. So, this would essentially allow you to treat a token as you would like an Airbnb. Again, like, I don't know how this benefits the restaurant other than, so, I guess if you know that those tokens are out in the world, you know that people have access to your restaurant, but not necessarily will come in. So I don't are really these know. limited tokens? Is this going to be like, they've already, yeah, I thought raised, so, yeah. they've already raised 14 millions. Fourteen that, million dollars in funds. I, I thought the Gary V thing was only ten thousand tokens or, or something, if I remember reading correctly. But 
I could be I want to be rich enough just to buy them and then lease them out for a dollar. <sighs> just to get the scourge of society in just, there. Just to lower the value. And then just like, to people... lower the value. <laughs> All the Ethereum just crashes because Gary V is like, yeah, I'm going to open a restaurant and yeah, it's just going to be on NFTs and you're going to buy with like uh, NFTs and blah, 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 and Ethereum and blah, blah. Okay. Like, I, I, I get it because, like, you know, this, this is super high end. It's like that, that Salt Bay guy, you know, gold plating steaks and shit in Dubai and, and whatever. There is a market for that ultra rich people dropping a whole lot of money but for the average person the average restaurant i don't get what that does like it doesn't get people in the door necessarily it doesn't necessarily make people spend money with you it's like it's like fashion it's eventually going to trickle down into some base ass consumer it's going to end up being like chinese people fucking selling you a nft menu for like 2 bucks so you can go and you know go and get your quick little food, and then you yeah. can resell it for a dollar. So yeah, you make your money back. But again, like it kind of makes the consumer the one that makes out with it. The restaurant itself, other than you know selling the initial ten thousand say tokens, uh, and then of course leasing it out. I guess you can say like they get you know two percent on every resell or whatever. Okay, but. I I don't know. It feels just a bit soulless, and I don't really get it. Like, and if that's the only use other than the leasing, you know, memberships, uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, no, nobody likes the QR system. I, I I don't know one person that likes going into a restaurant like, oh, here's a QR, just scan it, and there's your menu. It really takes people out of the moments, and it, it's really shit. I mean, I know bad dates are already people staring at their phone and and being awkward about that, but like. Nobody wants to start the whole fucking thing, you know, four or five of you at a table and say, ah, oh, you know, I'm just going to stare at my phone for like five minutes and just uh, browse on my phone. It, it It's uncomfortable and doesn't feel natural. So I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't get it. I've, I've tried. I really tried. Like I was, I was looking up all this shit and fuck. I, I just feel like it's just feeding into people's need to fucking feel cool. And exclusivity, just, I think, exclusivity, is just the, is the, is the key. Uh, again. It's like they're just. It's like everything is just stretching. I mean, you got this fucking metaverse, which is, just seems like it's just. It's gonna crash and burn. Like, like, like Facebook's just trying. You know, it's I mean, not they got new. Bored. <laughs> they got bored. It's not new. If you play GTA, that's essentially a metaverse. You know, Red Dead Online, that's a metaverse. Yes. Fallout seventy six, that's a metaverse. My kids yes. play Rec Room, Roblox. I mean, these, Minecraft. These are, uh, Minecraft. <laughs> they already said, they're, yeah. get the fuck out of here, man. Like, what, you know, I can already see, like, people with their NFTs putting them up in their own little meta sphere. Like, yeah. people playing for virtual fucking proper. It, come on, man. I mean, I could see the NFT thing working in terms of, like, you're saying a metaverse restaurant. And because I remember I was watching a video that I can't remember the name for sure, but uh, in Japan, in Japan, they have a. Uh, a subset of people that basically never leave their apartment and kind of live in their apartment and are kind of uh, modern hermits or whatever. And, and, you know, for these people meeting someone online, you know, in the metaverse, in a metaverse type restaurant where it's, you know, uh, this kind of situation, I guess could work for them. But, Again, like I, I'm, I'm a little old school that way. Like I, I, I prefer just a, a, just a restaurant, a nice, nice event, a nice night out. You know, good wine, good people, good food, and just that. That's it. Like I don't need to fucking sit in a virtual. Like if, the, if, if the thing got so big that like a company in the biggest cities in the world delivered restaurant style food to the person who's eating in the metaverse at the moment so that their avatar is eating the meal, but they're also physically eating the meal. Okay, I guess. But I I, <laughs> I don't see us being anywhere closer to that than 20, 30 years. That's a minimum, you know. Like, that's... I don't know. Like, I'm just thinking mom-and-pop restaurants. I'm thinking about, like, you know... How to pandemic-proof restaurants 
and I don't think like gaining profit margins from selling gifts is the way to go. Mm -mm. Uh, How you do know. you COVID proof the industry? How do where'd you... you get? Yeah, where'd you get that idea? Well, I mean, because nobody thought about this obviously beforehand, and we knew from all the closures that like nothing, nothing we were doing as as an industry was worried about anything like this. Uh, and I just thought, like, there's got to be steps going forward. And I'm not talking about masks or, like, these sort of things. I'm talking about legit things that we can do. Because right now, like, the big the big argument in the industry, like, there was a guy on, on Twitter, uh, Restaurant Manifesto, or whatever his name is, and he, he's just really angry, and he just, like, fucking angry tweets at everybody, and he was yelling at this Washington Post food writer, uh, Tom Saitsama or something. And you know the the food writer was arguing, you know, you know, oh, service isn't what it used to be, and like, I I don't I I don't doubt that it isn't. Like, and he was get, getting mad, like, how dare you criticize the industry? And we're we're going through the worst thing that we could ever go through right now. Da da da. I'm like, yeah, but I, and my response to him, and he didn't answer me back, was like, yeah, but just because you do something doesn't mean you're above criticism, and if it's bad. Sorry, but that's just the. It's bad. Like it, it's it's a. Uh, it's not against you personally. It's it's a. A fact of the matter in a way, and you know, it just you just got to deal with it. Take the criticism and move on. Fix it if you can, and if you can't, well, you know, say la vie, I guess. But you know, when it comes to COVID and and COVID proofing shit, like. Everyone's tired, you know, especially in the States. You guys had so many ups and downs and closures. and Like right now in Norway, it was last week or something, the, the country's fully open. There's no mass mandates. There's no nothing. Everyone's just saying fuck it now. I think most of Scandinavia is taking that stance. So er everything is just fuck it open. Are you wearing a mask? No. Okay. No, I haven't been for a couple weeks, honestly, because the government was moving towards this. And uh, even indoors, there's no one meter uh, distance holding or any of this stuff. So, uh, but also, it, it this is all it, because uh, Omegatron uh, decided to be a lesser variant of Delta or, or the, any of the ones before it. So, I mean, I think they're taking that into consideration where it's more of a a little bit of a flu symptom as opposed to, oh, I can't breathe and I'm going to die on a bed somewhere. So, yeah, yeah. System. So, yeah, I think that's kind of their stance on it. But, yeah, I was I was just thinking, like, fuck, like, there's got to be ways to... Because I think... <laughs> I first started thinking, okay, well, people are making menus too complicated. Like, I'm not saying shrink menus, but you know, it's the common form of menu now is like okay, three, four, five course options, and you know, you you're, you're trying to bring in like a hundred guests a night or something. You know, if everyone's getting a five course, not normally going to happen, but you know, say everyone does, that's five hundred plates. That's a lot for two people to take on. <laughs> you know, yeah. To, to make things simpler, do a little more a la carte. Do a little more like. I don't mean simple as in shitty. I just mean simple as in, you know, simplify the process. So, like, the food quality is still there. The ability to be uh, of cooking is shown and, and is, is still good. But don't, don't, you know, don't make it shit. Just simplify. Just pare so it down you're saying a little like bit. Le like, less things, like, less steps in the making of the food? or Yeah, less like, less in, less in the process of, like, prep or if you're gonna do prep a lot of things like if you can make like say if you're making a terrain or something as a starter you can mm -hmm. make a fuckload of them freeze them and then just have them so you're like you're kind of using the same amount of time for the most part but you know you're, you're being smart with your time you're being economical with your time instead of just like oh we gotta prep this thing every day and like we're just gonna we it's it's the chef bro thing of like we I just want to make what I want to make and that's that you know <laughs> it's the same thing like oh you know I'm not gonna compromise my vision well maybe you should a little bit just for the sake of your business and for the sake of the people that work under you maybe I don't know <laughs> maybe I'm I'm too uh, 
uh, abrasive that way. But I, I just think that th there's options there, I think, to kind of help the industry along when when this kind of stuff happens. So It's I, an interesting idea because you're right. There's a lot of ego, in, especially when it's people's creativity and vision. Like, mm. who wants to like limit that on something that may or may not happen? I mean, that's the yeah. way people would see it. That's why I say it like that. Even though it's happened already, there's still that level of, you know, we'll open back up and it's going to be back to normal and, you know, we can go back to our fucking 24 course things and just, open. it's like, yeah, but what happens, like, if, if something, like, similar happens like that again? Yeah. You know, but then I kind of almost feel like if something like this happened again, it wouldn't happen the same way. We'd prepare for this, but right. then it's like, then comes the next big thing and it's like, well, how do you prepare for that? So, you know, we're going to be here 25 years later. And it's like, how do we war proof a restaurant industry? Because World War Three really fucked us up. Yes. Yes. We all saw some shit. We, we, we're all shook. And people of our of our generation will will see young cooks in 20 years and go, that was fucked up. <laughs> that was a fucked up time. We all had a really bad time. A lot of people left the industry. A lot of people, you know got fucked up by being laid off, brought back on, laid off, having to work all the way through it, understaffing, you know, all sorts of shit. Closures. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame anyone for leaving. I get it, man. It is... Uh, no. If you're not... If you can't ride... It's like... You know what? It reminds me of, like, bull riding. Right. It's like... Right. Yeah, I, I get it if you can't hang. Like, I get it. I'm not <laughs> you. Yeah. It's weird that you bring up bull riding. Like... <laughs> like you do it every weekend. Like I mean, if you can't do it, it's cool. I mean, I get it. Well, you, yeah, you can't, you can't hang, but that's that's up to you. It's cool. Yeah, it's not it's not for everyone, and I I am aware how crazy it can be. You know, it's like sometimes I explain, I'll explain like a normal night, and then I can tell when people are judging me because it's like, oh, so it's like you're working with a bunch of high school kids. It's like, well, I see what you're saying. <laughs> but you you're not you're not in it that's quite normal it's, you know like you have you have to like adjust to the situation you're in you you go in with that fucking like make sense bullshit that's not gonna yeah. fly man i mean logic is kind of lost in the industry logic a little bit, is a little it? it's a little lost man it kind of it, it waves it, 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 there's a big wave on how how perception can can work within the industry the outsiders are like yeah but why don't you just do this like yeah but mm, you see about that <laughs> it doesn't yeah. it doesn't work that's a great idea and i'm sure it will work if you open up your own restaurant uh you yeah know? i mean that's, like, the, that's the best bit, thing, yeah. that's the best answer you can give them it's like yeah well you know it's not my restaurant and that's that's the culture i'm just working within the parameters of my uh, i'm doing my 65 percent of the chef's total 100 <laughs> that's fair that's all i'm doing well uh, like how do you feel then about like i don't know co not covid proofing but like making sure business won't have to close like uh, what do you what do you think can be done there i mean i would say figuring out ways to get the food to people would be obviously the best method whether it's i mean i i i don't even put it past a restaurant to start delivering the food. Right. You know, like that sounds ridiculous, but you know what, just a few, you know, a few years ago, the idea that certain restaurants have takeout is fucking weird, you know? Yeah. So why not just take it that step further? Like make yeah. the food true. Like, yeah, you can talk about it, like, but people will miss out on the experience. Let me look, people that want the experience are going to go. You yes. don't got to worry about that. And you got to think about all those people that would go, but they just don't want to drive or they just don't want to go. Sure. I or they're scared of the pandemic or whatever. whatever exactly. Look, I wouldn't mind, say, eat, let's say going back to like uh, French laundry thing. I wouldn't mind. I just, the, if you told me, hey, you know what? At a discounted price, you can have the same food, but it's going to be like delivered or you could just go pick it up. Okay, yeah, I'll think about it. You know, yeah. if, I, if I if I don't if I if I can waive the you know the, the 
the tips and all that kind of the extra shit. Yeah, why not? You know, I'll just go stop by Safeway and get my own wine. Yeah. <laughs> go get that box wine. Get that Tetra Pack. <laughs> That's what hey man, hey, you get way more wine in box wine than you do in a bottle. That's true. That's true. More and juice to get loose, you know. And it's <laughs> airproof and you can put it in your refrigerator. <laughs> Okay, so it la- it stays better longer. So that's actually legit true. It does stay better longer. Yeah. Hey, that's... hey man. <laughs> it, you see, it's it's just about looking cool. People just want to look cool, and it's like, bro, unless you have like those like temperature controlled like refrigerators for your wine, yeah. you're not impressing me. <laughs> it doesn't impress me much. Sorry, guys. No. No. But uh, yeah, I yeah I I agree with you. I mean, so to me, it's like find every way you can to get the food to the people because ultimately that's that's the name of the game yeah get people to eat your food and i i find like it's good that you brought that up because i was gonna talk try and talk about uh like uber eats and all these companies that basically and a bunch of like copycats of those industries just popping up everywhere making bank off of like our suffering you know, a lot of people don't realize this. I don't, I, a lot of people have reported on it, but a lot of people don't realize, you know, they take like 25, 30% off the top, which means all of our profits are basically gone. And you can almost say like anything that we sell to go like that, basically you could mark up as like uh, advertising budget <laughs> in a way because, you know, you're, you're not making any fucking money off of it. So in a way, like, oh, yeah, you know, you go to Uber Eats or you can go, you know, Fedora or any of these companies and say, you know, hey, you know, we can make deliveries for you and blah, blah, blah. We can deliver your burgers or your tacos or whatever you want, but you're not even making enough money to survive unless you sell twice as much as what you normally would. And, you know, that's not going to just happen over- overnight, really. Yeah, I think also just being more community engaged because yeah. I'm like, look, I understand a place like French Laundry or Noma needs to think like internationally. They're getting to people from all around the world. Yeah. But again, what happens in a pandemic? You're yeah. kind of like, it's almost like you turn the Wi-Fi off. And now you're just limited to talking to the people that live next door to you. In a pandemic, once everything shuts down, guess what? It doesn't matter about the international shit. You got to think about the people in your town. So I mean, even we- Noma made a burger. Like, yeah, exactly. So it's like so you could do things like um uh say like you could do like a dine and donate for your school. Yeah. Like like for for me, if I know that like a local restaurant is doing hey, a certain percentage is going to go to the school, I'm 100% buying. I don't care what my plans were for dinner, I'm putting my money into that. Just cuz right. I feel like it helps out my school where my kids go. Um just that kind of stuff. My friend was talking about how his restaurant does, um, like, will do um, special events for like charter schools and things like that, or mm-hmm. schools will have events at their place. That's another way. Um, or just, or like, uh, what is it? open it up to what is it called? Just like little private parties and events. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's just, what I just thought about. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you know have the french laundry experience at your next wedding Mm -hmm. hey i'll take that you know yeah yeah, fuck yeah i mean i i was just thinking while you were talking about that i i just thought like if you had a medium-sized kitchen you had you know five six people under you and you basically just sent them out into the world so basically create a catering company out of your business use the the restaurant that you already have obviously as a commissary and just send them out and you know whoever can do the most people can do the most people but like realistically you know dinner parties of you know eight to ten people or something and everybody goes out and you just have a your booking manager basically just booking these events these small dinner parties because people still want to eat out they still want the experience of eating with their friends but they're not physically allowed to go you know eat out in public i guess you could you could basically create a little catering armada that just goes out and then you can kind of create a like a almost like a profit sharing since they're kind of becoming little private private chefs, private contractors for you at the moment, and then just you know everybody kind of wins. That kind of reminds me of um, the movie Chef, yeah, where he has a food truck and then eventually becomes a brick and mortar. But mm-hmm. I think they still have the food truck. I think there's like one place here that does that. Like they have their restaurant, restaurant, but then they'll also have the food truck. 
And I think something like that would be cool. Like, ima- like in, in the street where I grew up, they would, like, pay the city permission to, like, close their street so they could have, like, a neighborhood block party. Yeah, cool. So now just imagine, like, your six neighbors pitch in for, like, a restaurant food truck to come. Yeah. And then, bam. And it's good for the restaurant because at least they, they know, hey, we're going to have service. They don't have to go out there and hunt and be like, well, hopefully this street will work. We'll see. I mean, it might still have to, but. Whoa, Chris. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so I don't hear you anymore. I'm going to hang up. <laughs>